Okay, there we go, recording. Uh, that's also your notice that you're being recorded. So I, I hope that's okay with everyone. <laughs> um, all right, and then finally, uh, hearing about you, about some of your preferences for what works best for the, the town center, you know, based on those three concepts. Advancing along here. So some of you may be familiar with the Wilsonville Town Center plan. Uh, that was a, a several year process adopted in mid 2019, looking more holistically at the town center uh, for development and land uses, uh, infrastructure, you know, public space design, both in streets and open spaces, and a really comprehensive kind of vision and implementation plan for the many coming decades uh, future of the town center. What we're doing with the streetscape is implementing are planning for the implementation of a subset of this, really specifically focusing on streetscape design, both for existing streets, like you can see here in blue, the town center loop uh, and purple, you know, park place running north and south. And then a lot of new proposed streets, these gray dashed lines that are intended to permeate through the town center and really create a new street grid and really a whole new land use and, and sort of urban, uh, much more urban uh, pattern, you know, as compared to some of the really big retail stores and, and big parking lots that dominate a lot of the space there now. This image over on the right is one example of a street cross section out of that plan from two years ago. So that's looking at Park Place um, near the town center park. And this is one option for a curbless festival street. So this is just one snapshot um, to kind of whet your appetite about what's in the town center plan. You can find a lot more uh, on this entire plan if you go to the city of Wilsonville's website. Um, I think maybe Philip or Kim will put a link in the chat so you can get to that. You can do a much deeper dive on that project there. So the intention of this streetscape plan is to think about the transformation of town center streets from this kind of condition today to this. How do we get from there to here? Where you're looking at, you know, one, uh, a significantly changed sort of development pattern, uh, a different variety of businesses um, and land uses, more residential uses, so on and so forth. And then a lot of noticeable changes to the streetscape with stormwater, uh, protected bike facilities, you know, traffic calming in many places, more support for transit services. And then right in front of you here, you know, big wide sidewalks that are welcoming, safe and inviting and really help blend into the public spaces like you're seeing over on the right side of the image. Let a few more folks in here. All right. So where we are in the project now, forum two, uh, this was all preceded by some work in October through uh, November, you know, preliminary streetscape concepts and that forum number one, where we looked at these concepts at a very high level with community members and then took that to planning commission for their way in. Uh, since then to now, we've been working on this refined concepts area and are in forum two reviewing that. We want to get your input to sort of take these three concepts and start to narrow down to a preferred or recommended concept. We're not gonna get an exact answer tonight, but we wanna get a sense from all of you as to what you like and don't like and, and what you think is best suited for the town center, um, you know, for functionality and aesthetics and overall sort of support for the vision of transforming the town center. We'll go talk to planning commission in early March and city council in early April to review that. And then in April, uh, May and June. Sorry, I'm thrown off here a little bit because one of my coworkers just joined the meeting. He's a Wilsonville resident, so it's allowed. <laughs> um, uh, and then getting into plan adoption uh, and planning commission city council review. So a little bit of that background. This is a statement straight from the town center vision of a couple years ago. We're looking to you know, create that vibrant walkable destination uh, for people to come together, so socialize, shop, live, and work. I just want you to keep that vision in mind over the next uh, hour or so and really make sure that you're seeing that reflected 
uh, in these streetscape designs that you can see yourself and people you know, you know, taking advantage of the streets in Wilsonville in that way. If you uh, open up that link that's in the chat and go into the town center plan, you'll see these town center goals. I won't read through these in, in depth, uh, but there are six of these related to environmental stewardship and support for mixed uses, uh, safety and accessibility, creating gathering spaces, and promoting the economic prosperity of the town center. So we sort of put some stars by some of these that are most relevant to our streetscape work and translated that into these signs of streetscape success you know, for design, ecology, safety and comfort, versatility, sociability, and a place that's vibrant and active. And again, also please keep you know, these signs of success in mind during this meeting uh, to make sure that, that what you're seeing in these concepts really fulfills these goals. We have a couple official questions for you at the end one of which relates directly back to these six categories. So again, just a little more on that town center streetscape network. Uh, this is that map again, and, and the work we'll be doing right now are streetscape concepts at a generic level. So it's not any specific place on this map. We're kind of thinking about the design theme and the arrangement of materials furnishings, lights and benches and landscape and stormwater um, at kind of a high level sort of generic location uh, to, to sort of gauge interest um, and, and support from you all uh, as to which theme really catches your eye. From this, as I mentioned in March and April and May, we'll take that concept and apply it to specific locations. Um, so some of those will be, you know, courtside, park place, or even some of these new streets that aren't named yet, um, that are planned you know, to be constructed over the coming decades throughout the town center. So that's the point later on where we get to location specific design. Again, just showing one more example of that, this is that same curbless festival street and this red arrow or red box over top of that, you know, sort of identifies Here's the general theme and feel that the town center plan established for the street. Our, our mandate in this project is to think about implementing it and more design specificity. Just one other example here, you know, the promenade. Uh, this is a new street that punches through what's a big box retail building right now and its parking lot uh, to bring a cycle track, stormwater, and uh, you know, a walking route through town. Um, it's a car free location, but you can see it's central to, for example, how you connect the town center park to the new I-5 pedestrian bridge that's coming in sort of just on the northwest corner of the town center. i show you those two examples just to point out that different streets will require, you know, different levels of intervention, some with entirely new street construction, some with a, you know, significant full redesign and rebuild and others with just a minor refresh. And that'll be what we're getting into in the next couple months as we detail that out. We're also looking at, you know, other influential plans, some of which are underway, some of which are uh, recently adopted. Those include that I-5 bridge concept where there is, you know, a recommendation right now and the aesthetic of this bridge as well as the plaza that would be landing on the east side uh, right in the town center. So we want to make sure that our materials and landscape and placemaking designs are complementary of that I-5 bridge work. The wayfinding and signage plan, it's not just a navigation tool, but has established a precedent for you know, the use of stone, uh, core 10, sort of natural looking metal and steel um, and establishing sort of a modern natural aesthetic. Uh, you'll hear Colin use that phrase a lot, sort of modern and natural, different ways of going about that and complementing the recommendations of, of Wilsonville's new wayfinding plan. And then on a, of course, a technical side, but also a very aesthetic and sort of ecological side, 
uh, we're syncing up with the urban forestry management plan, which is underway <laughs> right now. Uh, and we'll be wrapping up in the next few months. That'll really give us a lot of guidance on uh, trees and landscaping, plantings to go in those stormwater areas, and, and really just a, a head start on selecting uh, ecology that's really suitable for the town center. So thinking about the town center today, we also recognize there's you know, promising things there going on that we wanna build upon. You look at Courtside Drive here, you know, it's functional. It has the transit stop, the street lights, the trees and the bike lanes, uh, you know, an entirely serviceable street, but it needs that shot in the arm uh, to become sort of supportive of, you know, that transformation of the town center over the next couple of decades where these sites, you know, fill in with mixed uses and become more active and vibrant places. How can the investments, you know, that Wilsonville and its public and private development partners, uh, how can those investments, you know, help spur that growth and that transformation? A few things going on in the town center that we want to acknowledge and build upon, you know, the use of brick and, and carved stone to help uh, define places for gathering and reflection. Acknowledging that the town center, you know, is a significant transit location. So how do we factor in uh, shelters and bus stops there? How do we bring a little bit more uniformity to, you know, the street lights? There's at least three different types and we probably even missed some on our, our tour a few months ago. So just trying to unify and bring coherence uh, to some of these features. Mm -hmm. Same things with things like benches and trash cans and water fountains. Um, how do we tie that together and create a consistent aesthetic in the streets and that ties in with the parks? It just brings more uh, sort of holistic uniformity uh, to the town center. Feedback we've heard so far, you know, speak to exactly that. Uh, that cohesion and unity, the use of wood, brick, glass, metal, and stone, working with the I-5 bridge, um, and again, you know, support for that modern and natural look. Uh, if you want to see any more uh, of the official notes of our, our sort of public outreach to date, some of that is online right now, some of those notes from Forum 1. So, that's essentially the background. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you this one slide and then hand it off to Colin. But this is just to reflect, um, you know, the way in which, again, over these next couple months, the input you provide today is going to help us get to that recommended concept. And then we'll be applying it to up to, you know, up to eight street locations and potentially up to three sort of unique location designs. Those could be intersections or plazas, plazas on private sites uh, where we want the public and the private realm to really integrate together. So that's the upcoming work. So keep that in mind, you know, that additional degree of detail uh, as we talk about these concepts today. Okay, before we get into the concepts, any questions or things I can, I can clarify? Question. I have a question. Yes, Wayne. Um, handling parking. Uh, anytime I go down to Safeway, that area it usually has most of the parking filled. And as I drive through, even though it's somewhat spotty, uh, a lot of the parking lot seems to have cars. How are you planning to handle uh, parking if you put all these new streets in? I'll take Wait, that I... question okay. if you'd like. <laughs> um, so Kim Reibold, planner with the city. Um, so at the town center streetscape plan or the town center plan as a whole uh, did do some research into the parking situation. Uh, what it found is that currently some spots in the town center are underutilized with parking. Some have more utilization. A lot of it depends on the time of day. 
Um, but as, as the area changes over time, uh, parking would be provided in a couple of different ways, either, um, you know, on site as a, you know, if a property does redevelop, uh, they would be providing parking, um, as well as uh, we do have future plans to do a parking management uh, study to, you know, as changes happen, to look at uh, where parking is being utilized and what other types of investments in parking might need to be made. Um, so it'll, it'll kind of play out over time. Um, but, you know, as you have existing development, that parking will stay as is and, you know, it'll, it'll evolve over time. Thank you. Yeah, and, and dealing with, you know, location by location, parking isn't in the scope of this project, but you will see that we're certainly including on-street parking as a key factor in the streetscape designs in a lot of these concepts. So we, we definitely acknowledge that it's an important use. The reason why I mention that is because uh, in redesigning a town center, uh, the assumption is going to be that you're going to uh, you know, add additional uh, retail, possibly mixed use with apartments or condos. Uh, and, and that's gonna start to fill up some of that empty space that's now used for parking. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you for that comment, Wayne. Uh, ben, Jacob, I, I see your hand up. Yes, fellow Ben. Um, I did attend the earlier um, reach out programs, both for the pedestrian bridge, uh, cycling bridge, as well as the town center. And um, I think, Kim, you kind of answered last time the concern I had with the increased um, intersections on uh, Wilsonville Road. Um, but yes, we do have already a few stops um, between the freeway and town center loop uh, east, which is uh, a street that I live off of. Um, it, it seems like they're kind of close together. Are they all going to be traffic lights? So that also was covered in the town center plan there. We actually recently opted updated our transportation system plan to look at those future intersections and um, the short of it, and it's really, that's beyond the scope of this project, but the short of it is that um, you will have uh, some signalized uh, intersections, uh, both at the current east and west uh, intersections with Wilsonville Road. However, the configurations will change slightly. There will be a new signal uh, for the new main street, but then the existing, uh, light that's at the uh, entrance to the shopping center and Rebecca, that will convert to a bike ped connection. So it'll be the same number of signals. It's just a shift in how they're configured. Will that uh, be kind of flashing lights like in front of the city hall uh, on um, courtside and town center loop east? So yes, I believe um, the signal that would be uh, at um, Rebecca, that would be a signal, but it would be, um, it would stop traffic, but they would all be synchronized. So you wouldn't have stops happening kind of out of sequence. Um, Thank you. Mm -hmm. And my other question is, um, I did mention at our, um, at our last survey um, that it does rain nine times out of the nine months out of the year here. And uh, you did show a picture of the one kind of area uh, behind the water fountain on town center park that has um, um, a cover um, will there be other like covered areas i mean even the the west uh, the smart bus stop uh, the one that i see the people use is the one that's closer to goodwill um, i have very rarely seen anybody use the one on court side uh, across from the city hall that is actually covered so when it's raining i see people sitting with like either their umbrellas or yeah, we'll show you some of those weather protection features in the concepts here coming up, and then we can talk more about those uh, af after the presentation, if that's okay. Thank you. Yeah, uh, AJ. Uh, within the scope of this forum, uh, are, are we going to be talking about any uh, 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 safety designs of intersections and roads as far as pedestrians and cyclists? 
Yeah, I, I think you'll see some of those components in the streetscape plans and sections. Um, so after we get through the three concepts, we can dive into that topic a little bit more. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Martin. I have a question related to that previous question. Um, are there uh, design speeds included in these streetscape design concepts that you'll be unrolling? In other words, are you thinking about the speed, maximum speed allowed on these? Is that a component of design? Yeah, it will be. It, it's not something we've explicitly addressed right now, but we'll be tying this in with the TSP designations, uh, which factor in a lot of those speed controls and, and design controls. Um, and I think it, it's, it's fair to say that the majority of the streets in the town center you know, are intended to be calmer, safer, slower streets that are much more accommodating of people walking, biking, and crossing. So please, everyone, keep that in mind as, as you look through these concepts and, and let us know if you're not seeing that. Martin's left hand. Yes. <laughs> oh, did I raise this one first? Okay. <laughs> Yeah. My left hand has a question to yeah. um, different subject. Thanks for that answer on the previous question. Um, my, from my observation, I find it really dark inside the, the town center um, currently. Um, and I'm sure you're not doing photometric uh, design on, on your concept for these streets, mm -hmm. but um, is there, um, a follow-up or is there attention to lighting levels within the town center from a perspective of safety and just, you know, pedestrians being visible and bicyclists? I have a hard time uh, driving, especially uh, in, a, in a dark area. And as, as a car driver, when I am driving through there, I can only imagine how dangerous it must feel to try to cross some of these streets such mm -hmm. as town center loop um, in the dark. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, and I think Colin will speak to some of that when we go through the concepts, talking about lighting selection and, and locations throughout the streetscape. You know, we're not picking exact locations right now, and we're not doing that lighting study as part of this. Um, but to make consideration for ensuring crosswalks are illuminated, you know, driveways have visibility, um, curves and, and intersection points. That's definitely something we'll be keeping in mind and, and factoring in. So, yeah. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, I'll uh, hand it off to Colin and let him go through all three concepts here. Uh, and then we can sort of open up the broader discussion right after that. All right. Colin, take it away. All right. Um, so our first of the three concepts uh, we came up with is an ode to Wilsonville's agricultural legacy. Um, and when we first started thinking about what that means, what that looks like, um, we, we came up with these part T diagrams, these figure, di figure ground diagrams. Um, so you'll see one of these for each concept. Um, and it, it really is a very high level, what does agricultural look like um, as a concept and a theme um, so that we can help tell story through our design. Um, so we started to think about what patterns emerge when we think about agricultural legacy. And that's what you're looking at here in this diagram. So um, very uh, grid-like, very, um, think about uh, plots of agricultural land as you, as you fly over them or see them from an aerial perspective. Um, and then as we moved forward, we started to think, okay, let's take these geometries um, how do we take it, where do we take it next? And we started to apply different use types to those geometries. So starting to play around with where um, gathering spaces are located, landscape areas, um, motive or, or movement spaces, and um, where landmarks and public art and transit stops can be integrated into the streetscape. And as we developed that idea further, we got to where, um, we're at here, which is um, how, what is that concept, that, that part T diagram or figure ground diagram, what does that look like at a street scale? So we started to apply real scale to it. This is a completely made up intersection on a completely made up street, but the point is to show how this design um, can be played out along a, a streetscape. So it, it's really meant to show um, different scenarios, crossings, mid-block crossings, um, on-street parking, 
these curb bulb outs, you know, what do those start to look like? Um, where can transit stops and, and stormwater facilities be located? And as we dive further into uh, detail, um, not quite construction documents yet, but um, as we dive further into detail, um, how do these, these motive or movement spaces look like in section? How do, they, how do people experience them as they walk through? Um, you know, it, in this concept, we were looking at, um, you saw how uh, grid-like the concept was. Well, what if, those, what if that grid starts to pop up in 3D? How does it pop up? Well, maybe it's in the form of planters, uh, tree planters. Maybe it's in the form of covered areas uh, for gathering spaces. Um, and we'll get into a little bit of precedent imagery a little bit later, kind of what that looks like as an example. But. And here are those images. So as we start to look at different streetscape elements, what do they start to look like? And uh, for our agricultural legacy concept, we really focused on three driving words to kind of guide this design, purposeful, structured, and timeless. And so we, when we talk about uh, benches, you know, and, and street trees and public art, gathering spaces, movement spaces, what do those start to look like? And they're very, um, again, grid-like uh, or on a grid, um, and, but, but purposeful materials, um, you know, kind of a, um, it's no, no, no frills, right? It, it's very nitty gritty type, type stuff. So um, again, looking at motive spaces with some concrete banding, uh, gathering spaces with very utilitarian um, benches, functional but utilitarian, um, and then those core uh, street tree planters. And as we look specifically at those materials, we're talking about, you know, useful, purposeful, sandblasted concrete, large swaths of concrete banding. Um, maybe the crosswalks have a some sort of uh, pattern that's in an, an ode to to uh, structures that, you know, those, those steel I-beam structures that you see on agricultural lands, barns, those kinds of motifs and images. Um, Corten steel grates uh, for street trees and the use of steel and timber on uh, street furnishings. Uh, and additional kind of, you know, functional streetscape uh, and intersection design talking about crosswalk treatments, uh, crosswalk treatments. Um, and instead of metal street lights, maybe the, the poles become a laminated timber with a, a metal feature on top. Um, ADA pavement, instead of uh, a yellow plastic uh, paver, maybe it's a core 10 bringing, um, bringing again those, those uh, tying the material and the aesthetic together. Um, and this is a common th uh, theme, these kind of materials that based on our feedback that we got, and I, you saw the images of the wayfinding project that has that uh, been going on and completed, um, we started to bring those into the streetscape design as well. So you see the, those materials and the ADA paving, the bike racks, the plaza features, street tree planters. Ben, did you want to ask any clarification questions? I can ask clarification questions. <laughs> if anyone has uh, anything they'd like clarified. On the agricultural yeah. concept. Now, so we, we can dive into that. feedback. Yeah, we can dive into feedback at the end, but um, if there's any clarification questions, we'd like to answer those. All right, All right cool. I don't see any hands raised, so Perfect. carry on. You mean I'm that good at my job? No. <laughs> um, so our second concept was technological innovation. Um, obviously it's a popular theme in the area, um, specifically Wilsonville as well. So um, the big main three kind of driving words that we were thinking about was mo were modularity, simplicity, and contrast. And the motif that you see here in the figure ground diagram is uh, kind of started with the idea of a circuit board um, and kind of drawing from, from those shapes and, and forms. And uh, this was its very high level and then we dove into applying um, specific use types, just like the other concepts. Um, so what are those, where those start to get located? Um, obviously there are different forms in the last one. Things are starting to, you know, less grid-like, they're starting to get a little more uh, linear. But um, when we talk about modularity, we talk about spaces or uh, 
modularity and simplicity. We talk about spaces that are less defined. So, um, you know, maybe it functions as a, as a gathering, an outdoor gathering space on one day, but um, potentially it's overflow for um, uh, cafe seating or restaurant seating on another, you know, so you talk about less defined uh, spaces. And this is what it looks like if you were to apply it to a streetscape scale. Uh, again, looking at where transit stops and, and, and um, stormwater uh, features are, are located. Um, in this concept, we added as an example, um, as an option, um, showing what a pedestrian only street could look like. Um, we start bringing in again, um, how do we define where people move, how they move? Um, we start to use landscape beds and raised landscape beds, in grade landscape beds, um, street uh, furnishings to kind of guide people's experience as they move through the space. Um, when it comes to transit stops on, on this concept, uh, you know, we looked at both formal and informal or um, more, more prescribed, less prescribed. So on a side street, for example, you might just have a bench as a transit stop. So what does that look like versus on a main street, you might have a, a larger transit stop that has a covering and um, is also kind of defined and surrounded by landscape. Um, and again, the, these, uh, we'll get into some images later, but we start to look at uh, these corners and what plazas look like. How does public and private space um, integrate? How is it defined, but how did, how did they also begin to integrate? Uh, again, looking at these areas in section, um, maybe instead of raised planters for street trees in these modus spaces, now we start bringing in um, like an in-grade planter. Again, very uh, following the forms um, that, the, that the plan defines here and the, and the theme defines, but um, in terms of, I think a, a big contrast to the previous agriculture concept would be in the gathering space. When we start to look at these covered areas, um, the, the covered structure was very um, trellis-like in the agricultural concept. Um, however, in the technological innovation concept, maybe that becomes a little more modular, a little more um, modern contemporary look. Um, and what do these features look like? So again, um, Gathering spaces start to get a little more less prescribed, a little more open, um, less formal mode of spaces. Uh, public landmarks, maybe we start to bring in, you know, in this concept, we start to bring in the idea of uh, interactive uh, public art. Um, something that maybe, I mean, it has to, it happens to be technological. It doesn't have to light up, but it's interactive is the point. Um, and, you know, benches, same materials, uh, timber, steel, corten, but starting to take on a different, more modular form, modern uh, clean line form. And in terms of materials, si similar materials, um, starting to introduce the, really push the idea of, of contrast in this theme. So looking at these concrete uh, patterns, uh, maybe it's a grid pattern, maybe it's a, a linear concrete banding instead of a large um, you know, swaths of concrete banding. And uh, as a contrast, contrasting material, bringing in like a, a polished stone instead of a, a rough or, or a natural stone. And by popular demand, uh, this is my time to talk about crosswalk treatments and lighting of those crosswalk treatments. So um, this is one idea, there are many, but the idea of bringing in, um, you know, a way of highlighting those pedestrian crossings uh, plaza features, instead of being um, uh, kind of open and prescribed, or sorry, uh, closed and prescribed, maybe they're open. And again, using those contrasting, um, in, this, in this example, I'm using circular planters, but again, contrast with maybe a grid-like concrete pattern. Um, street lights start to look a little more modern, modular. Um, ADA paving, instead of having, um, you know, integrated tiles, maybe it's these studs that have a cleaner look. Uh, bike racks, very simple, modern, uh, functional. And any clarification questions? No? Before we dive into our last one? Yeah, I don't see any hands raised and nothing Perfect. in the chat, so. Let's keep going. Final concept. Uh, was the idea of this, this natural concept of, of river environment, um, which um, many people
Siegel and Will Siegel, if not all, love the idea, the idea that nature is very integrated into the city. And when we thought about a motif for this, we thought about um, the idea that the streetscape functions just like a river. You have these series of ebbs and flows and these gathering spaces are maybe these eddies where you know, water collects in circles and people, just like people can gather and circulate. Um, uh, thinking about the ideas of natural fluidity and organic. And again, applying use types to these, to these forms and spaces. Again, very high level at this point. And then diving into the street scale. Um, what does that start to look like? Um, these forms are, are very diagrammatic. Uh, they are to, to show a proof of concept. But the idea is that... Um, these forms can take on different uses, different typologies. So maybe it's a raised planter, maybe it's an ingrade planter, maybe it's just a, if it's a gathering area, maybe it's just a different material on the, on the, on the surface. Um, you know, decomposed granite versus concrete, that kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be landscape versus hardscape. Um, but again, looking at those uh, plaza spaces, how do those start to get integrated? Um, in contrast to the other concepts. Uh, this one really does deal with uh, meandering and flowing. We recognize that there are places that um, meandering might not be the best. Maybe you really do need to directly get to point A or from point A to point B, but um, how you get there, this your experience changes in, in each concept. So uh, motive spaces or move, movement spaces, uh, we st brought in the idea of we have these wave-like, water-like um, movements and patterns going on on the on this ground plane. Well, what if we started to bring those into 3D? Um, what if there were planters that uh, were, you know, that undulated, the, the backs of them undulated or the, uh, the fronts of them undulated or the, the soils were mounded or sloped. Um, and in the gathering spaces, again, that covered, covered area, you start to see it takes on a more organic form um, in contrast to the other concepts as well as a little more landscape integrated into this concept. Um, definitely focus on that natural field. And our uh, street furnishings here and uh, typologies. Um, again, uh, the benches taking on much more organic form, uh, same materials, but much more organic form. Um, street trees, maybe those are instead of tree grates, now we're trying to look at how can we embed these into larger uh, landscape areas along the streetscape. Um, and public art, instead of having a interactive or um, specific art piece, maybe it's art in the form of landscape, right? Maybe, um, and again, these are going to take on different sizes, different shapes, appropriate to wherever they're placed, but um, focusing on that natural feel. Um, and gathering spaces, kind of these shapes of eddies and, and kind of, um, you know, breaks from, from the, the major flow and movement of the, of the sidewalk. And diving into those materials, again, wood and uh, steel for these uh, benches. And uh, instead of a core 10 uh, tree grate, we're bringing in the idea of a powder coated one and a different pattern. So maybe it's a, instead of linear lines for technology, for this river environment concept, we're looking at ripple patterns in, in water. Um, instead of a polished stone, we're looking at natural stone, um, bringing in a decomposed granite, almost like a, a sand or sediment, you know, on a river bank. Um, and instead of linear concrete banding, we're looking at these organic forms of concrete banding. Same materials, just different form. And the street lights, uh, taking on more organic form, uh, less modular, more uh, soft edges and curves, uh, plaza features, contrast, but again, using those more organic forms uh, with uh, embedded concrete or uh, planter shapes. Uh, and then the crosswalk treatment, taking on those same kinds of forms with concrete banding, bike racks, uh, maybe you know a more organic form of bike rack, uh, same material, steel or metal, but less rigid, clean line, and more organic in form. And the ADA paving, uh, back to that um, core 10 tile. 
And these are all three for you to soak up and give us some great feedback. All right, thank you, Colin. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the slide for discussion purposes a little bit here. I just wanna show a few more things um, and then we can get into the, the Q&A portion of this. And Ray, I see your hand is raised, so we'll give you first billing here in a moment. So, um, a couple features that Colin mentioned, I just wanna point out is kind of universally considered across all these concepts. You know, here's an example of those promenade streets that have the flexibility to be, you know, vehicle spaces with uh, car movement and parking when needed, but can also be closed for shorter long-term durations for uh, festivals, for example. Stormwater is a key consideration of this uh, to tie into that urban forest management plan. And of course, uh, for, you know, ecological and, and you know, utility purposes, uh, thinking about stormwater in you know, recognizable locations like curb extensions, like you're seeing in the bottom right there, um, within a, a plaza space in the bottom left, you know, along the street in the top right, or even closer to the building edge, um, as you're seeing in the top left here. So there's lots of opportunities for that. And, and the drawings Colin showed you uh, with those four colors really kind of articulate how you can juggle and balance spaces across. As we mentioned, transit in the streetscapes, um, creating space for uh, shelters, simple stops, bus pullouts, and anticipating not just you know this example smart bus or or a longer smart bus, but you know what's the future of transit? Are there small driverless vehicles um, going around Wilsonville in the coming decades? How do you make your streetscape sort of future proof and accommodating uh, of that possibility? And then those public private spaces, you know, Colin showed that in those cross sections with the, the magenta color um, where you have, you know, covered spaces, gathering areas, but also that movement and mode of space uh, kind of blending between what's happening in the street right of way versus what's happening on the, on the private side of a property there. So, um, I wanna ask just one official polling question here and this should only take about a minute or so uh, to get some quick feedback and then we'll, we'll open up for questions and answers. So I wanna launch this question here. And let me get this going here. Um, I'll have to stop screen sharing to do this. So when you think about um, these concepts, I'd like you to answer you know, which of these concepts best reflects the goals of the town center plan for and here they are again, those six qualities, design, ecology, safety and comfort, versatility, sociability, uh, and vibrant and active. I'm gonna bring up this survey real quick. And we'll let this run for about 30 seconds or so. And this is entirely unofficial, non-committal straw poll voting, but we just, we're putting our finger to the wind and appreciate your feedback on this. All right, there's probably a few more votes coming in. Let's give us 10 more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Snap a photo of that. Okay, thank you everyone. I appreciate your input there. Close that. Uh, I will go back to the screen sharing on that blended image that we mentioned. Give me just a second here. Uh, and at this point, I think, Ray, if your question is still active, yeah. I'll let you get so, us going. So I'm uh, Ray Atkinson, I'm a demonstration planner at Clackamas Community College, which has a Wilsonville campus. And I'm curious about the river uh, concept because uh, if there's any uh, furniture in on the sidewalk that's not, uh, you know, including the ADA access, I'm curious whether, because uh, it's, it's not as, 
I guess, rigid as our two concepts. It's more, you know, flexible and flowing. And, and so um, I guess I'm curious whether the design team is deciding whether, um, you know, ADA access when you have, you know, inconsistent width of the sidewalk and potential for people to put uh, street furniture or sidewalk cafes or stuff out there on the uh, sidewalk, whether that's evaluated as part of the windingness of the river uh, flow or the you know the sidewalk width. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, we're, we're definitely ensuring everything will be ADA compliant, you know, MUTCD compliant for traffic control at, at crossings and whatnot. Um, but I, I appreciate that the river concept can look, you know, maybe a little bit disjointed or cluttered um, mm -hmm. that, that would cause that, that concern. Um, so we'll definitely be making sure that clear zones are adequate, both in width and height, side slopes, the use of materials. Um, you know, you saw that we did uh, include some use of pavers or stamped concrete. We know that that can be, you know, a detriment to people using wheeled mobility devices. Um, so really we want to keep those kind of textures in like the accent zones, not so much the motive spaces. Um, and, and yes, you're right that the width of the sidewalk may vary quite a bit, uh, but we'll, we'll ensure to meet those minimum requirements uh, for ADA and other standards. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's a great question. Thank you, Ray. If I can add on to that, Ben, mm -hmm. um, that it also um, is an opportunity to keep the form that we're that that we're going for, but part of that form to keep the minimum distances might become hardscape rather than softscape, as an example. So um, the uh, if I just if you look at any one of those shapes on the on that on that concept, it, it doesn't all have to be landscape or all hardscape or all raised or all that great, but there are ways to keep the overall form and, and maintain those, those uh, yeah, the required distance, minimum distances. Other questions uh, from anyone? I have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. We do have a chat question, Ben, as well. Yeah, uh, was that you, Wayne? Yes, it was. Yeah, I've got, I've got some questions and comments. Um, first of all, uh, I I personally like the the river concept. That uh, it's a nice flow to it. Although I think all of them could work, and they could all work in different areas of of the plan. Um, but which of the concepts uh, would be easier for the city to maintain? far as keeping it clean and anything else that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a conversation we're beginning to have with public works and city engineering. Um, I wouldn't say that one of these concepts is obviously easier to maintain at this point. Um, we wanna get input on kind of your preferences for the aesthetic and the use of the space. And then what we're doing over the next couple of months is really laying in those kind of practical considerations. Mm -hmm. How much does this cost to build? How much does it cost to maintain? How much labor is involved? How do you keep the trees alive? Um, so that's gonna be a major kind of decision factor with the preferred concept, no matter what the design shape and form of it is. I see, okay. Um, another question is your concept uh, drawings are very open and large scale as we were looking on the, uh, the screen. How will these look in a much scaled down form? Because we don't obviously have that much space uh, to work with. Yeah, uh, do you mean the, just the width of the space or well, I mean, what, what kind of space constraint do you mean? Of uh, like a, a plaza or, or a, uh, a nice walkway uh, with a, a adjoining a covered space for uh, public gatherings. But in looking at those pictures, they basically are 50, 60 feet wide or so. Uh, you may only have in some areas to be able to use 20 or 30 feet because if you're gonna use a lot of that and still add residential uh, uh, or mixed use or, or whatever it is and fit in parking, 
uh, that's going to have to be scaled down dramatically. Okay, I think I see what you mean. Um, yeah, it, that's something we'll be dealing with when we get to these more specific locations. Uh, but we know that space constraints are, are going to be a major factor um, in some locations more than others. Um, you know, Wilsonville Town Center right now does have those 60 you know, foot plus right of ways in some locations where there is, you know, adequate room to have a pretty decently wide sidewalk, the on-street parking, the two vehicle lanes, um, and a lot of the components shown in these drawings. And I think, Wayne, you're probably also asking about like that plaza space that might happen on the other side of the private property line. Um, you know, that's a decision a, a private developer could make and that we would be blending you know, that four-court plaza in with the streetscape. Um, there's also opportunity for the city to, you know, sort of take control of additional right-of-way throughout the town center. Um, if you go back to that, that map with the gray dash lines with all those new roadways and connections, um, not only designing the streets for those new roads, some of which were a lot narrower, like that promenade with no vehicles, um, but there's also opportunities to bring you know, little parklets and, and little public plazas kind of within the realm of the, the private space there too. Is there a, uh, uh, an idea yet as to the increase in density for buildings uh, within this plan? Yeah, I'll defer to Kim and Philip on that and, and then the town center plan too. Yeah, I'll take that one real quick. Um, so the there isn't a specific density called out in the town center plan, but there is um, sort of an envisioned uh, different areas that have different character. Uh, and so there, uh, it's largely governed by building heights and then other building and dimensional requirements. And so there's estimates of what you could have it look like at a 20 year build out and a 40 year build out. Uh, and that information is all available in the town center plan. But a lot of it is gonna be dependent on, you know, what actually happens. Um, it is a pretty flexible plan in terms of what kind of uses can locate where. Kim, are you referring to um, density as to people or as to uh, square footage of uh, structure? Uh, that would be structure. Okay, all right, so that sounds not good. Uh, also, um, is Wayne, there would you a... mind if uh, we allow a few other folks to get I their did, questions in? I did want to point out, Ben, because uh, I know you've been busy answering questions. Uh, we do have one question in the chat, and it does also look like we have three raised hands um, among the participants. Yeah, Ron, I see your question about what were the results of the straw poll. That's going to be our grand finale, but we only have one minute left here, so I'll get to that in just a moment. And, and um, I would offer to, um, if we do have questions that really go beyond the scope of what we're looking at with these design concepts, I'm happy to talk to you later offline if it's more about the town center plan itself, because um, I know there's a lot of background uh, that kind of comes along with this project, and so I'm happy to answer any more questions after the meeting. Yeah, I'd like to add, so um, my contact info is on the Let's Talk Wilsonville page for the project. So um, we will be posting additional survey questions that are similar to the ones that we've asked tonight. If you wanna take a look at those and respond, they should be up by Thursday of this week. And my email address is on that page. So if you do think of any questions that come up later, you can email them directly to me and I will get an answer from you, whether it, whether I know the answer to it or another staff member in the city um, knows the answer, I will make sure that your questions do get addressed. So there are multiple ways you can reach out to city staff if you have questions after tonight. Right. I see four hands raised, we will go Noreen, Ron, Ben, then Martin. Noreen. I'm um, actually, I, I think uh, Imran had, I think he had his hand raised first before Did everybody he? else. Okay. <laughs> so I've been, I've been watching as it's been going. So if we could go to him first, that'd be great. Okay, Ron, then I mean, Noreen. It's all right, yeah, either way. Um, my, I guess my question was, I know I ran out of time, but I wanted to know what, if there had been any dialogue about a unique feature that, you know, and I don't want to throw out any options because I know you guys are the experts on design, but like a unique feature that would sort of be just a 
fit a feature piece for Wilsonville that people would kind of come see and be like, that's really cool. I, I know Oregon State University has a couple, I taught there for eight years, they have a couple of buildings on their campus that are, you know, unique to the design and they, one of them's fully like it had, you know, anyway, they had a, a fully powered by solar building and things like that. So I was wondering if you're going to, if we're going to try to incorporate something like that, which I think would be awesome. And then the second part of my question was, are we going to try to create any sort of connection to other ethnicities in the design with, uh, you know, Wilsonville being an inclusive city and that's been pushed by the council a lot. It would be cool to see them put something into action and actually, if we're going to spend this money and do this project, let's, let's try to create some sort of connection to different ethnicities and maybe integrate that into some of your designs. So that was like both of the, you can answer one or both. If you don't have time, I understand. Yeah, uh, those are both great questions, Ron. And I'd actually put those back to you as to what suggestions you would have for sort of a signature piece in the streetscape. And, and then, you know, what do you think the best ways to acknowledge and, and sort of put at the forefront the diversity and ethnicity of Wilsonville. What does that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I have ideas for days, and I think if you know, <laughs> I would I would be willing to have conversation or email or exchange information with you guys as the experts in design or someone else. But I think it's it's about having you know different ideas from that are going to connect to an Italian building or style, and then maybe perhaps something Greek or something from an Asian country and or Middle Eastern country and having those different unique, even just, you know, what type of, if something's written in Arabic versus a different language, um, you know, I think those are going to be really neat little things for people that come from different backgrounds uh, to, if they walk through for any event and be like, wow, they thought of this to be inclusive. And th so those would just be something I would throw around, but I, I'm not an expert in this field. I, I, uh, in design, I just, I know that when we're going to make a project like this happen and be 2021 with it, let's, <laughs> let's include as much as we can in, in the initiatives that we have going for our city. And we have some big time initiatives happening right now with those types of ideas. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't venture to try to suggest something because I wouldn't know what would be cool and walkways or doorways might have a flavor of something from European style or, or uh, Asian style that I wouldn't know. You might know that more than I would, but those would kind of be my, you know, off the top of my head responses. Yeah, that, that's great to hear. I appreciate that, Ron. And if there's more you want to write out, you know, please find Philip through the, the contact information. Um, I, I think you're right that there are a lot of ways to make the town center a more signature place in, in the design of spaces whether it's the street or the private buildings or the parks or community art that's happening throughout the space. Um, and to make that more representative and inclusive, I think is a really, really important goal to keep in mind and to strive for. So I think we're all, all listening intently on that. All right, um, Noreen. You're muted, Noreen. Sorry, there we go. Right. Um, I just have a couple of comments. I really, I'm a walker. I really like the idea of a pedestrian only area. Um, as far as the design, I like the river and the agriculture. I think for me, it's important to not have a design that somebody in 2050 goes, oh, that was done in the 2020s. You know, keep it so that it's gonna last for a really long time. And then safety is a big issue. I, and I, my question is, is there anything gonna be done in the current downtown town center area. I think like going from Safeway to, um, you know, the dollar store and some of those places, it's the most confusing, hard to walk area. It's just, um, it's rough. And I, I guess, so for me going forward, making sure that there's a safe, safe, it's safe and that you can get to where you wanna go without crossing a bunch of things. That's all. Those are great points. Um, yeah, we definitely know that the, the navigation of the town center can be uh, challenging, not just to know where you're going, but how to get there. Um, that, that lack of a street grid and some of those streets are very complicated to cross to say nothing of the big buildings and the parking lots that interfere with that. Um, so between the wayfinding and signage plan and then implementing that more specifically with through the street design, um, 
you know, we hope there's there's a lot more kind of logic and intuitiveness uh, to the way that you can get through sort of a reintroduced street grid here. Yeah, thank you. All right, I think it was Ben next. Uh, yeah, mine kind of uh, touches on uh, what Imran was suggesting. Uh, I mean, we do have a unique uh, uh, facility there. It is the only uh, Korean War Memorial in the state of Oregon. And I remember when it was built, uh, it was you know built by raising private funds in part. Um, it represents all of the countries. I mean, there's a figure, uh, if you ever go there, uh, that lists every country that was involved uh, in the United Nations operation to keep uh, South Korea free from a communist invasion. It was the first action by the United Nations which represents every country on earth. Um, kind of linking that to the theme of uh, whether it's the pedestrian bridge that feeds into uh, the new box, uh, the box store that will be converted into some of this space and then also into town center park is an opportunity that's literally right there um, and is a, an opportunity for not just including you know, one specific area, but, you know, the United Nations, which literally represents every country on earth. And my other thing is, is there a connection between the pedestrian bridge? That is, is there a different theme for the pedestrian bridge and then a different theme for the town center park area? Are they going to be united? Um, yeah, good good points. That that second one, um, you know, the pedestrian bridge design and the streetscape are happening in parallel, and we're synchronizing sort of where we can. Um, you know, that the pedestrian bridge has certainly engineering and aesthetic features that are very unique to that use. You know, a, a bridge over an interstate highway. Um, so we don't have anything of that particular scale to exactly match to. But when we think about the use of materials in that landing plaza, yeah, you know, that's really how we're trying to tie the streets and that that together and to build up that emerald chain concept um, for a really green, active walking and biking route through the town center and Wilsonville more broadly. I think that's kind of the intention there. Um, and the other uh, thing that uh, Noreen mentioned, I mean, illumination and uh, kind of a safe uh, area. I did enjoy all of the covered areas, um, particularly, the, particularly the ones in the technology and river theme, um, but the illumination um, would definitely help uh, navigation, uh, whether it's in a car, a bicycle, or on foot. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, we are one of the most beautiful places under an overcast sky for a majority of the year. <laughs> So uh, lights help. Definitely. Um, and that's a great point. And, and uh, to your previous point about the United Nations, I'm writing that down. I know that's a, a very big topic to try to unpack, um, but I appreciate you recognizing the importance of that organization and what it represents sort of in a global sense. Uh, and the Korean, Wilson, War Memorial, into, which, and the Korean War Memorial, which is already there. And the only Korean War Memorial in the uh, state of Oregon I think we have a sister city that kind of partners with us in North Korea as well. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, I, I should also apologize, Imran, if I got your name wrong previously. I may have misread it there. So I apologize if I messed that up. Uh, I think Martin. Great. Yeah, um, great concepts. Thanks, Ben. Uh, and again, full disclosure, I am a coworker of uh, Ben and Colin, but I'm also a resident and I'm here as a resident um, community member. So um, I, I wanna say that um, I think this is a really important step towards a more vibrant and walkable uh, town center. Um, I'm really um, a big fan of the plan. I think uh, our town center needs a lot. Um, it's not a place I uh, particularly am drawn to right now other than stores. And it's something that I miss in my life. Um, I know that when the old town development with Fred Meyer came in, I was just thrilled to have the type of spaces that are available there along the streets, um, in particular behind the McMinimans um, that just add a whole quality of life for me, uh, places to stop and walk to, bike to, and um, it really pointed out that we're 
missing that in our town center. So um, with that, I, I, I also want to say that we shouldn't be afraid of density. I heard a couple of comments that started to go in that direction. And I also am not concerned about uh, lack of parking in our town center. I don't think we should be designing for parking um, because if uh, having parking was a measure of success for town center, we shouldn't be having any problems right now because the theater is often empty, the parking lot, the uh, Fry's parking lot has a lot of availability. That's not what makes a vibrant town center and the vibrant town center that this community needs now and in the future. So um, with that, I just wanna say a couple of things about placemaking and get back to these con concepts for design. I think we have a large town center and I wonder just like Wayne, um, hey, um, can we have all these concepts in the town center? There's plenty of space, there's plenty of streets. Um, why, why pick one theme, um, one concept? And then I started thinking, well, maybe um, some of these uh, concepts um, are better in more special places. Um, and I'm thinking in particular the river concept, which I like, but I'm not sure if I would like the river concept as a theme throughout the entire time, town center. I would like it in like a really cool spot. And um, on the other hand, the agriculture scheme seems to be really functional in many places, but it might miss that pizzazz that I think we want in certain spaces. So um, that's my feedback on the concepts. I'm personally most interested in the technology the technology concept, I think that, um, that brings the most opportunities for us. And then finally, I have a question for the team. Um, um, with the size of the town center and the number of um, street types we seem to have by function, is there an opportunity to, to tie the function to the design, the concept design that we're dealing with here, which seems to be around the palette of materials and colors, et cetera. So that's a question. Thank you for, uh, for the information provided tonight. All right, thank you, Martin, I appreciate that. Uh, AJ, we'll get to you here in just a second, but uh, since we are over time, I should give the results of the straw poll here very quickly. Uh, if anyone needs to head off, please do so, but we, you know, Colin, Philip, and Kim and I can stick around as long as anyone likes. So, with one vote, agricultural legacy. With three votes, technological innovation. And with a whopping eight votes, river environment. So, so there you have it. We didn't want to give those results too early and bias anyone's comments. So, but thank you for voting in that poll. That is important information for us. Uh, AJ. Uh so I, I know we're running long, so I'll keep it short. I, 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 I do like the, the all, uh, as Martin said, uh, all three of these concepts at, at a high level are, are, are particularly appealing. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure that when it comes down to actually getting down to the details of each streets, will go into more of making sure that everything is like safe and usable. Um, one thing that struck me is that the ADA uh, uh, stamped plates uh, had a, a bit of material consideration. And, and I'm wondering if uh, we should also keep in mind while we're, we're, while we're developing those that we should also make sure that there, whatever material we choose, it should still be highly visible as well as tactile for those with uh, vision impairments. Um, that that was uh, just a, a, a thought that occurred to me while you guys were presenting. Um, other uh, other uh, thought in mind and it's right here on my shirt, of course, is, is making sure that people are encouraged to walk and bicycle in and through the town center area, uh, because there's nothing that deters me more than going out on a busy four lane street and having like a two and a half foot uh, area separated by a painted line between me and an 18-wheeler truck going down the road. Um, 
uh, honestly, if, since moving here, I've I've loved it just because I can walk or bike two minutes to Safeway and back to my apartment, and it's great. It's just I, I would love to see more more um, uh, design concepts that include that safe, preferably separated from traffic areas for bicycle traffic. That's all I had to say. All right. I could uh, hop in know. real quick then. Yeah. Um, I will note that in the town center plan, we do have um, some plans and these were recently adopted into the TSB as well for the city, but um, where we do have plans for some cycle tracks. Uh, so really speaking to having some preferred routes that do separate out the bike traffic, that, that is a part of the town center plan. So we'll definitely be looking at how we integrate those plans into what we do with the streetscape. All right, uh, Martin, your hand again. Yeah, I sorry, I just have a closing thought about art. Um, it hasn't been talked about, but I think it can be a really rich component. Um, we have a vibrant art scene here locally, I would say, um, and um, was brought to my attention that uh, with uh, spoken word and art, one can do a lot in the pavement. Um, also, maybe even raise some funds. You know, the library has a little piece uh, with the, where you could buy a brick. Uh, with your name on it. Of course, Pioneer Square in Portland is famous for that. I also like, um, and my family likes this, is the poetry in um, the, the streets in uh, some, some cities um, that could relate back to a local heritage um, or a sense of place. Um, for instance, we have a couple of um, authors that lived in this area, in particular, uh, Walt Morey. It'd be great to see uh, some of his um, you know, writings memorialized in a meaningful way in, in art, or um, we can maybe reflect some of the, uh, the um, um, cultures that are, live in this community through um, art and spoken word in, in these um, uh, street concepts as well. So thank you. All right, thank you, Martin. Uh, Natalie and Ben, we'll get to you here in just a second. I wanted to hand it off to Ron Heberlein to make a, a quick statement. Yeah, sure. Uh, this is Ron Haverline. I'm a planning commissioner here for the city of Wilsonville, and I did just want to say thank you to uh, to all the residents um, who've taken time out of their busy, busy schedules to be able to participate uh, in this event. Uh, your feedback in, in this really is key to, to us having a successful plan moving forward, and so your questions and, and, and comments and, and thoughts uh, are not lost on, on the city staff uh, and on the planning commission as well. So thank you for the time and, and really do appreciate uh, taking this time to uh, to give us this feedback. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, yes, Ron. Thank I you, everyone. To add, um, based on what Ron said, I know that there's a couple of questions that we've left off. And if possible, before we really need to end the meeting, since it is very important for staff to get the public feedback, um, you know, it would be great if everyone would take the survey on Let's Talk too. but I realize, you know, we all are busy. So if we could do those questions just to get those responses down in log, sure. I, that would be great for the project. Okay, there is one or two more official chat questions here. Give me just a second. I went off script slightly uh, with, with some of the questions here since so many of you had good comments unprompted. I appreciate that. Uh, let's go to this one first. So if everyone can take a moment in the chat window and again, straw poll, but after seeing these initial impressions, could you please rank these concepts from your favorite to your least favorite? I wish there were a crafty way of doing this as a poll, but we'll rely you, on the typing. Thank you. Could you put the concepts up again? Yeah. Go back to the three here. And 
And when I say straw poll, don't let me that that bias you towards agriculture. Oh, I get it, straw. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an Iowa thing. We won't hold that too much against you, Ben. <laughs> Iowa, so that it, that that explains the corny joke. There you go. Careful. I'm from Ohio, but we do get mixed up a lot. Be careful of Iowa jokes. I'm from Iowa as well. This is Noreen. I think it's a Midwest thing. Yeah. Corny jokes. <laughs> also a Midwesterner, I can attest. My parents are from the Midwest, like I hear Midwestern too. All right. Thank you, everyone. I see the votes pouring in here. I appreciate that. Uh, Philip, did you want to also do the sort of open ended one? That it, I it, think that we've had a lot of good discussion that was totally unprompted that I feel like would have been covered in that open-ended question as well, but it's good to put it up. It might trigger another last minute thought. So. Yeah, we'll let folks um, just kind of contemplate this if you have any specific thoughts um, about how gathering spaces, the movement areas, landscape, plazas, public art, um, some of those key streetscape elements. Um, how do they contribute to your enjoyment of a streetscape? And uh, are, are you seeing those qualities represented in these concepts? So any comments you have or things you want to type out along those lines would be great. Uh, in the meanwhile, Ben and Natalie, your hands are still up. I don't know who of you was first. So whoever of you two wants to chime in. Natalie can go first. Okay, thank you. All right. This has been very good. Um, I have, we live in the condominiums on um, Memorial Drive, just down the block from the library. Mm -hmm. And so as a resident and a neighbor, I guess my concern, uh, my question is that we have a tendency as, as people to, to look so much to the new excitement of new, we leave behind the old areas and they start to look really ratty, but we're, they're still part of our town. And um, so my question is with a limited amount of budget, um, and only so many people in the maintenance department to take care of uh, trees and, and uh, streets, and this type of thing, sidewalks. Um, is this, are we, are we going to be leaving the west side of Wilsonville Road without any future improvements as you move to, um, or the south side, I should say, as, as we move into the newer town center area, which is very exciting. Um, I don't know if I'm making myself clear. I would like to see something incorporated from the area of the town center brought over to, even if it were an art piece down from the library, down Memorial Drive more that would tie it in, that would bring it down to the older areas that are still uh, in use. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. And, and maybe Philip and Kim can weigh in from a, a broader you know, city of Wilsonville perspective on that. Yeah, I'll start. I mean, I think, you know, this, the, the town center plan, it, it's, funny because in some ways it I don't it's it's a it's a shape on a map right but it's not necessarily how somebody might, might experience it right because you have Wilsonville Road you're not necessarily looking at one side of it and thinking oh that area 
is different than this other side. I think for most people, it's just kind of an experience that you take in all as one. Um, you know, that being said, the reason the town center plan itself focused a lot on that north side of Wilsonville Road is that, um, you know, that was really the area where there was, you know, more potential for change in the mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, I think that's a really great suggestion. Um, I don't know if that fits necessarily in the context of this plan or not, since this plan really will ultimately be governing streetscapes in that town center. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's a really good point um, that we can take back to our team and kind of think about how, um, you know, th there's a lot of potential opportunities in the future. There's a lot of interest in art, um, public art in general. Um, and there's been some work around that in the city. Um, you know, so I think, you know, that's one, one thing that, um, you know, we probably could give some more thought to is how, how we can take some of these elements and make sure that, um, you know, they're, they're really tying um, these places together and that, um, you know, you feel like you're still a part of it, even though you're not a part of it. Um, so I, I do appreciate that comment. I think we can take that and, um, you know, see where there might be opportunities in the future to, um, you know, get some pizzazz for lack of a better word. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, um, Ben. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I totally forgot my <laughs> my uh, comment. Um, but yeah, so thank you everyone. Yeah, okay. <laughs> thank you everyone for uh, your time. And uh, I guess uh, Martin might have a question. All right. Thanks, Ben. Mm -hmm. Um, did I raise my hand again? Uh, I was just typing it up, but I'll, I'll, I'll make it verbally my point here. Um, it's probably better. Um, I think that we shouldn't forget opportunities to get um, community involvement in actually creating place. You know, um, we, we tend to think that, you know, these streetscapes and these places need to be designed, financed and created and maintained by uh, our public sector. Um, I think, especially in the town center, that's been uh, lacking a sense of public ownership, community ownership. I think it'd be great if there could be some sort of almost, um, I won't, don't want to call it um, tactical urbanism, because I think it needs to be a little bit more, but a way to um, get folks physically and organizationally involved to create a piece of their own town center. Um, and whether that's through art or a, a temporary plaza or a more permanent plaza, I think that could go a lot farther um, in creating a sense of ownership and pride in our town center than just leaving it up to the public sector to uh, once again, uh, spend our tax dollars and half the population or more is not happy about how that gets spent. So I think, we need to really think about the symbolic and um, the fundamental role that the town center can play in our community and how we as community members can partake in that. And yes, I would sign up to participate in something like that. I'm not just saying that. Might be emailing you then <laughs> in the future. We do have some implementation activities. You know, I think a lot the, the plan really did envision some of the implementation not being pushed by the city, you know, whether or not it's through, you know, a business organization that, you know, comes together uh, with businesses in the town center, or as you suggest, community involvement. Uh, we just haven't, you know, as we've gotten things off the ground to begin with, you know, we've been focused on these very discrete tasks. Um, so, so knowing that that's something you're interested in, I think is good. And I will make note of that um, because I do think we wanna, you know, we wanna empower the community to help shape that sense of place that in the town center. Yeah, and this was this thought was spurred actually by a comment that somebody put in the chat about the uh, undercrossing and how the, the school kids in, were involved with that art piece. And I know that means a lot to uh, a big part of the community. Martin, we're going to put your cell phone number in the implementation chapter, if that's okay. Uh, but, but in all seriousness, that, that's a really valid point. Uh, how can you foster that that sense of civic mindedness in a community and, and recognize something like the Korean War Memorial that is, you know, implemented by a civic group and kind of leverage that, take advantage of that enthusiasm and try to build it in as many places as you can. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, I remembered my uh, <laughs> comment. <laughs> Thanks to Martin. Uh, yeah, that Korean War Memorial, uh, a lot of the funds were raised privately. And um, there's also a rose garden at the uh, corner of it that is uh, maintained by the uh, Rotary Club. Um, so that idea of community involvement, rather than spending um, our local tax dollars on art. I mean, we can in incorporate art through, uh, you know, helping organizations, encouraging them to donate, uh, to maybe adopt a portion of it. That would allow us to spend uh, our tax dollars on actually maintaining and improving uh, the park rather than buying a piece of art, which I'm a fan of uh, the horse um, and the statue with the camera that's pointing to the Korean War Memorial is a, put together by a childhood friend of mine. He designed um, a part of that on my uh, computer when, you know, when we were in our 20s. So I'm a fan of art, but I, I'm not a fan of using our tax dollars to support, you know, artists. I think there's a, a lot of wealthy people in Wilsonville that um, can contribute and a lot of businesses that can do that as well. Last comment from me, sorry. <laughs> oh, no worries. Thank you, Ben. Can I piggyback on that comment? Sure. Thanks. Um, my son was in high school at Wilsonville High School when the tiles were being done. So um, Shatola Hart's class, art class, for a, a long time period did those and had that put together. And I think that to incorporate the art classes um, at the high school, um, to continue that tradition in Wilsonville would be extremely um, beneficial and just rich with, um, with experience for the high school kids, the art kids and the, um, it, they have a lot of talent. There's no reason to spend a lot of money for hiring a lot of talent when you have the resources at the high school that are phenomenal in the community there. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just throwing that out there <laughs> as an experienced mom <laughs> and, and, a, and a resident of Wilsonville. So thank you, that's all I have. All right, thank, thank you, you everybody. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I don't see any more hands raised and I think the chat has quieted down. So we might be coming to a close here. Um, last call for comments or questions. Otherwise, you can find the project online. We'll be launching a survey in a few days there. Uh, Philip's email is available, so give him an earful. And with that, uh, thank you, everyone, and, and have a great night. Uh, on behalf of the whole design team, Kim, Philip, Colin, Martin, guest starring, uh, really thank you for all your, your really important insights and enthusiasm tonight. Uh, it's it's what keeps us going as consultant designers, um, seeing how much you care about your community and trying to work on your behalf um, to make this a place that, that really lasts for decades and decades. So thank you sincerely. Thank you. Thank, thank you all. You. We appreciate it. The community appreciates it. Thank you. Thanks, all right. Have yeah. a great night. You too. Bye. Thanks for coming. G.Y. and Mike B., are you there? All right, I'm gonna send you both back to the waiting room. My apologies. All right. Okay, thank you. Uh, stop recording. <laughs>